I'll be speaking Kannada and English because I think in Kannada and speak in English. Uh, because here uh, the people, uh, there are uh, many people who cannot understand Kannada. It's my duty to, to communicate to them. The first duty of a theater practitioner is to make people at least sit, not walk out. <laughs> so that's the first achievement in theater. If you make somebody sit uh, as long as you speak, then you have passed the first qualification of theater. So I'll try to, uh, I'll, I'll take the exam today. I'm very happy to be uh, uh, speaking here uh, because of uh, the name Kannada, Karna, Kannada Sangha in Christ College. The first time I heard about Christ College was through Kannada Sangha. Uh, because um, at that time, uh, during the uh, 70s, 80s, when I was studying, it was um, Srinivas Raju whose um, um, uh, leadership here, um, you know, they uh, planned several activities, including that uh, poetry competition for students and publication of books. And also uh, Srinivas Raju's um, uh, special ability to, you know, to, uh, to disseminate Kannada into, into various parts of the society is a very uh, important contribution to the language. And uh, I'm very happy that, uh, you know, Christ College, being a Christian institution, uh, doing this much of work to Canada is a very important uh, uh, contribution. And I'll be, I'm very happy to be uh, here in this uh, um, uh, stage. I'll um, speak in uh, three parts. The first part is about, the topic is theater and its context. The first part is about the relationship between theater anywhere in the world and its context. So what is the relationship? Is theater constituted by its uh, context or is context defined by theater? Let us see some interesting examples about that relationship. That's the first part. The second part is, um, um, is about uh, the Kannada theatre history, the modern Kannada theatre history, which is uh, from um, 1852 until today. That's what we usually call as Kannada, modern Kannada theatre, Adunika Kannada Rangabhumi. If, um, <coughs> so that period, um, I have edited a book in English, which Manipal Universal Press has published. Um, and um, I have um, um, compiled excerpts from um, uh, writings about theater so that we get, it's a source book of Kannada theater history. So um, I'll take some examples from that book, from that archive, uh, illustrating the relationship between Kannada um, theater and its context, a specific points of time. And finally, in the third part, I'll speak about my experience of theater and its context related to my theater practice and Nina Sam's work. First, when we uh, use the expression theater and its context, we usually mean that the context is the bigger set and theater is within it. So it is the context which makes the theater. When we say, uh, you know, Elizabethan theater and um, Shakespeare and um, the Elizabethan times and Shakespeare is the Elizabethan times is the context and Shakespeare is the theater within that. And similarly, Gupta period and Kalidasa, you can, uh, so the, 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 we have a, um, have a uh, feeling that context actually produces the person. And that's how <coughs> theater history is usually written. Normal theater history, you uh, pick up any book, it actually gives you a, a first a so sociological uh, account of the period, then an intellectual account of the period, various theories and important people who came, the thinkers, and then it comes to theater, the space, the uh, drama, the acting, the uh, stagecraft, etc., etc. But very interestingly, the opposite is also true. 
the um, theater context produces theater, but theater also um, uh, produces you know, various repercussions in this society. I'll take a very a, a few quick examples is that you might have heard the name Balagandharva in Marathi. He was a very famous actor at the uh, top of the Sangeet Natak farm. Um, he, was a, he was a great actor and he uh, always did female roles. So Balagandharva is a product of his society. But Balagandharva, interestingly, also he made such an impact on the, um, on the Marathi society that because he played female roles, women went to theater to learn how to wear a sari from Balagandharva. How to do, you know, in Kannada, hava bhava of, of femininity. So that is what people, uh, that's what uh, Balagandharva was very uh, famous for. This is a very trivial example, but there are uh, serious examples like, uh, you know, if you take the text like Ramayana and Mahabharata, whether we use Ramayana for, the, for which we want or whether our minds are formed by Ramayana and Mahabharata is a very difficult uh, question. I mean, you can always reverse it. You, you reverse it and it becomes true. Therefore, um, one theatre practitioner from France, Antonin Akto, uh, he's a very well-known uh, theoretician al uh, also. He has said a very, um, uh, an, an interesting saying is that if theatre is the double of life, then life is also the double of theatre. That's, that's the quotation. See, with context, that is the uh, that is the truth. A society will produce theater, and theater will produce society. I'll give you examples of uh, this phenomenon, of this double-edged phenomenon, uh, to you from um, uh, Canada um, theater history. First example is um, from the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, Gubbi Company was a very, uh, uh, have you heard of the name Gubbi Company? How many of you know the name Gubbi Company? There are not many, so let me explain. Gubbi Company is a very well-known Kannada theater company. Uh, it, uh, it was a rural company around 1900. And around 1909, a very well-known theatre practitioner called Gubbi Veeranna joined it. He became the chief of it. And then Gubbi Company became one of the prominent companies in Karnataka. Travelled all over Karnataka and to parts of Andhra Pradesh and uh, Tamil Nadu. And it was like television uh, <laughs> of those days. So it was very well-known and uh, there are uh, legends about it. So if the whole of the Gubbi company would sit for uh, in the railway station, they would, they would hire trains to move. And uh, in the ra tra train stations, they would sit for lunch and the whole platform would be covered. So <laughs> there, there would be so, as many people in the, um, in the company uh, you know, to, uh, uh, to cover a whole railway platform. So that's Gubbi company. And the story I'm telling you is the very a formative phase of uh, uh, that Gubbi company. It was 1900, and Gubbi company was a, a Gubbi is a small town near, um, between Bang Bangalore and uh, Tumkur. Uh, sorry, between Tumkur and uh, uh, Tiptur. Uh, not between Bangalore and Tumkur. Uh, it's roughly 100 kilometers from here, I suppose. And um, they were operating from that village. And they did not have any uh, exposure to Western thought or anything. But 1900, the society was getting exposed to, uh, to the Western thoughts. So somebody from somewhere came to go, uh, 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 went to uh, one person in Gubbi Company and they told them that in Western, uh, in the West, uh, it is now, it is realism that is uh, very prominent. 
So they asked that person, you know, what is realism? He said, you know, if uh, theater should be like uh, the world, it should be reproduced. The stage should not, I mean, it, uh, something that uh, you cannot find in the world cannot be on stage. So that is realism. It was an interesting thing for them. And they thought, they were doing uh, Ram, Sampurna Ramayana. And they wanted to try, uh, at least in one scene, realism. And uh, they selected um, uh, that scene in which uh, uh, Hanuman goes to Lanka to find Sita. And Sita is where? Um, Ashokavana. And uh, she is she's, um, um, uh, kept there by uh, Ravana. And Hanuman goes uh, without the notice and then he streaks into, uh, sneaks into the, uh, the Ashokavana. So that Ashokamana is to be um, is the is the scene, and they have to uh, do the misan scene of the of the of of, um, of Ashokamana. Earlier they would it was very simple. There is there was something called the forest scene. That was they what they inherited from the Parsi theatre, and Parsis in, inherited from the Victorian theatre. So we, during Victorian times, theatres from England used to travel to Australia. And they used to stop in Bombay for a, uh, to fill up, etc., etc., to, for a uh, refueling, etc. And that refueling of the, um, of the ships took several days. So they had to uh, stop in Bombay for more than 15 days. Therefore, they would do a show in Bombay. That's how that theater came into, um, uh, into India. And from them, the Parsis, and then the Sangeet Natak people, and then People from um, uh, the theatres, uh, the theatre practitioners from Karnataka, to, um, uh, imitated and uh, they adopted it, and that is how they used to do the Ashokavana scene—a huge painted curtain with Ashokavana painted on it, and Sita would sit, and it would be—it would be no realism because the whole of Ashokavana is in two-dimensional, uh, in two dimensions, and Sita is in three-dimensional. <laughs> she is three days, so it, it doesn't, it would not match. So they thought that, you know, this is not um, uh, real enough. So they thought that the, we will, Ashokavana means a forest. So it's a, at least a, a huge garden. So they thought that they will, um, uh, they should plant a tree. But how to plant a tree on a stage? And also the stage has to be changed every, uh, you know, then for the next scene it has to, be changed. So you cannot plant a tree on, a st on stage. So they, uh, what they did, they went to the forest, the real forest, and uh, cut a real mango uh, tree, a part of it, a branch. They brought it and kept it in the center of the stage and thought that, you know, this is the real mango tree. But can the, uh, can a huge mango tree that too in the garden of Ravana. Can a small branch represent that? It doesn't. So it started looking very jarring after a few shows. For the first few shows, it was interesting. Something new was happening, so interesting. So they thought that, you know, this is not enough. It was not real enough. I stress this point because uh, according to Raymond Williams, uh, who has written about has uh, written a wonderful book? It's an old book called "From Drama from Ibsen to Brecht." Um, in that book, his basic argument is that th there are no, uh, as as theatre practitioners, as theatre students, we should uh, understand this: is that we always hear the name, you know, going away from realism. He his major point is that there is no going away from realism in the West. It's going more and more towards the realism. Therefore, there are changes from step to step. And similar thing happened, so they wanted to be more real. Um, and this word more real is also interesting in many other senses. There is a famous book by David Shulman called uh, More Than Real. It's about, uh, it also covers about Kudiyattam in, um, in, in Kerala. So they wanted to be more real. And because a branch of a mango tree uh, does not uh, represent a mango tree. 
So they thought, they went to the, uh, after a few shots, they got a new idea. They went to the uh, market and brought real mangoes and tied it to the branch. So that it became slightly more real. It worked for a few shows, but again, then it didn't work. So they thought, they brought jilebis, they brought samosas, they brought, uh, they brought uh, banana, they brought tender coconut, they tied everything on that tree, it became a kalpa vriksha. And then it started looking real. <laughs> and, the, uh, and the Hanuman who would come into that scene, um, and p there are people who have, have heard it from people uh, who have seen the Gupi Company uh, production, the old men, and uh, they, had, uh, they told me that Hanuman would first come into the, uh, the scene and eat a couple of bananas and drink a, a tender coconut before talking to Sita. So that was a huge, um, um, became a very popular scene. And they called it as realism. Do we think it as realism? Of course not. We think it as, you know, something very, something very exotic. But that is how realism was imported. I mean, I, I uh, mention this, and this is the carrier of modernity in, 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 in many of the Indian languages. And I give it as a, uh, as a paradigmatic uh, example of, um, of uh, the, the carrier of modernity in, uh, uh, in Kannada theatre. One, one of my books is called Mavina Maradalli Balahannu, um, Bananas Grown on a Mango Tree. That's what the whole of Kannada theatre is. This, um, this, the, this phenomenon of um, uh, mangoes, uh, bananas grown on a mango tree is true about the whole of that period. When Shakespeare is uh, translated to Kannada, a lot of Shakespeare is translated between um, 1870 to 1880. Um, so in all those things, on all those plays, Shakespeare was not very, um, uh, very authentically translated. He's adapted. Uh, so Romeo and Juliet would be converted into uh, a happy ending. So somebody, some god will descend and make the, 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 the two dead um, lovers. They bring, um, he would bring them back to life and it would end happily. And that is how the Indians wanted to see it. They, they, the, uh, the, the people wanted to see them alive. They know that they are dead, but at least make them alive at the end of the play. So that was their demand and they actually catered to that demand. And when they did Sanskrit plays also, they localized it. There is a very uh, good example of, uh, um, of um, Shakuntala between 1870 and 1880. I think 1880 is the year. There two Shakuntala adaptations came to um, um, appeared in uh, Kannada. One was by, by Basapashastri, Shastri, who was in the Mysore Palace. He did Karnataka Abhijnana Shakuntalam, that was the play. And he did a very, um, in Halaganada. He translated Shakespeare into Halaganada, which was a good choice because Shakespeare is old English in any way. So uh, that was a very good choice of uh, thing. But he realized at the end that, you know, it cannot be, uh, staged, so he made a concession. He, for footnotes, he wrote some songs, uh, saying that you know people who want to produce it can use these songs, and those songs had something which is which was which is not at all there in uh, uh, Shakuntala. For example, Dushanta leaves uh, back for Ayodhya, leaving um, uh, Shakuntala. They don't meet. He he simply leaves, but in um, uh, Basapa Shastri's uh, um, Shakuntala because he wanted to use a duet there. So there was a question and answer, a conversation between Dushanta and Shakuntala and this famous song called Nagaveni, Nagarigana, Pogi Boravene. And that song was when uh, Dushanta wanted to uh, say, he wanted to say goodbye to Shakuntala uh, before leaving and they, he introduced that song. Um, and Another translation, Churumuri Sheshkir Rao, 1880, he used completely North uh, Karnataka uh, songs, 
that to folk songs to uh, um, to depict um, avijnana shakuntalam so the the adaptation of plays happened not only to shakespeare even to indian playwrights so uh, in this way theater when it confronted its context it also changed the context and the context changed the theater so this is what i want to uh, emphasize at this point another very uh, important uh, example is the relationship between kannada theater and kannada uh, again the, the 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 question is uh, theater in the kannada language and kannada in kannada theater they are very interlinked does kannada as a language produce theater or theater as an institution does it produce kannada is a question which can be answered on in on both directions and the famous example is the is between 1915 and 1930 when many kannada playwrights started you know producing their own kannadas kailasam kuempu putina bm shri they were the, the the most prominent four people they all produced kannada and bm shri had a very um, he he gave a famous call that you know uh, we have to inherit tragedy from um, uh, from western theater for kannada to become a proper uh, theater so we, we have to inherit tragedies therefore he wrote a play called ashwatthaman in which um, he used he had he, had, he also translated aeschylus so he used the greek idiom uh, and uh, um, he re-narrated the mahabharata story in in that play and what happened in that process was that these these four playwrights they uh, they were trying to write new kinds of plays they created new kannadas for example kuempu wrote in in an old kannada which is actually a new old kannada it is not old kannada if you now compare um, you know kannada written by pampar uh, ranna um, and uh, kuempu's kannada later kuempu also wrote uh, um, uh, the uh, ramayana darshanam and if you compare those two things they are completely different it's this new old kannada is different from old kannada but it only you know uh, it it looks like old kannada so he, they uh, kuempu and putina they they were competing with each other then there are differences between those two also kuempu was um, more uh, monolithic whereas he he mostly used the five uh, matra structure and putina used several matra structures so that was the major difference but they were both trying to um, uh, invent uh, new kannadas at the same time kailasam um, invented a new uh, brand of uh, uh, kannada it was some kind of a kanglish and it's, it's a combination of kannada and english which was the fashion in uh, in his uh, mysore the mysore was a uh, was a very developed um, um, city at that time and therefore the upper middle class in mysore would speak in uh, english mixed kannada so the the whole thing is very interesting they i'll i'll uh, one gentleman says that see my uh, my sonu and daughter ro have to send their annual installment of pindas when i am dead so <laughs> so it, it goes on like that so there there is a very interesting combination it's the syntax is kannada a little bit like my, my lecture the syntax is kannada but the content is english so um, it it goes on and on and it creates an interesting theatrical uh, experience and that is how he changed both kannada and english and his context and then there were several playwrights who followed him parvatwani etc etc in kannada who did this so there also the relationship between theater and its context is not fixed it's not it's not that context produces theater theater can also alter the uh, context the final example is um, 
there when uh, uh, the cinema arrived when uh, cinema arrived we all know that it completely swallowed up uh, what was there in kannada theater so everything was them I mean, uh, swallowed up in the sense most of the people who were doing kannada theater started doing kannada cinema Inst including uh, people who were there in um, uh, honnappa bhagavata etc etc they the stalwarts who were there in the gubbi company they migrated to uh, kannada cinema and uh, kannada cinema flourished and kannada theater died out in this negotiation what has happened is you know kannada has uh, took a kannada theater took a revenge making kannada cinema as kannada theater kannada the theater is an indirect kannada cinema is an indirect kannada theater therefore a a, a polish scholar uh, christopher berski is his name he was an a poland polish ambassador in uh, india for a while and then he has written about uh, extensively about sanskrit uh, uh, theater and he has written a very interesting essay called uh, film p h i l u m uh, film as the new avatar of sanskrit drama hindi film as the new avatar of sanskrit drama so um, the new uh, cinema came and it uh, swallowed up kannada theater but the kannada theater made the new uh, form look like kannada theater so it it left its uh, um, marks on the on the cinema which is which is still there until today until today a mother in a kannada cinema is always like a, like the sanskrit uh, drama mother it's always an archetype it is never a realistic mother a brother is a brother is a brother is a with b capital brother wife is a w capital wife so it's it actually produces archetypes rather than characters and that is the change which uh, uh, the, which was prompted by kannada um, Um, theater also because most of the pra practitioners were imported from theater the sensibilities were also imported so that's how the whole the whole thing um that's how theater can also uh, there is a survival story here for uh, uh, for theater practitioners i always tell uh, when uh, theater practitioners feel very bad that you know now Uh, now television has come and uh, taken over and now social media nobody comes to, uh, to the theater even if they come they will be watching their mobile they won't be uh, seeing theater etc etc when they complain i tell them that you know you have to uh, be practical and take learn how to take revenge on the new media if you know that then failure is fine because you will be living in you will be living a different life in the new medium which is okay i'll come to that point at the end of this lecture whether we can do it today is the is the hardest question it's a i i'm not very enthusiastic very i'm uh, optimistic about that but i i would still would like to pose that question and finally i'll come to the <clears throat> my part where i'll tell you about my experiences and how nina sam dealt with its tradition um one thing which um, um uh, nina sam uh, worked on uh, uh, you know the, the, the basis of nina sam's work in theater was based on one important potential of theater which is theater as activity theater can be done in various ways theater can be done as art and you know, so i immediately give the example of adi shakti you know this this their uh, uh, today they would you know just for art the for, for doing the best that is possible in terms of acting in terms of stage craft in terms of dramaturgy etc so they are trying their best to do that therefore they won't don't try to disseminate theater a lot you know they are aloof in um, Uh, pondicherry and uh, they don't even allow people into their uh, spaces very easily you will have to really it's hard to uh, go and meet them and they will be only their the product will be 
uh, will be visible. I mean, it's it's fine. Um, and but that's a different kind of theater. That's one kind of theater. And another kind of theater which is completely opposite to that is like is, is theater as activity. Even in Karnataka, there is a huge um, um, all over Karnataka in every village. You have a history of you know people doing your father, grandfather doing theater. You have that uh, history all over Karnataka. So you would invite some person to teach you some songs, and some uh, he would play the harmonium, and the people from your village will join, and some one will do Duryodhana, one will do Bhima, and then they will combine and do the theater. It's not theater for art. They just wanted want to do it as a as an activity. So as an activity. They did it, and theater was sustained for a long period uh, in um, in Karnataka. And I think that is a theater which has not been studied at all in Kannada theater history because it defies categorization. That is the problem. It is neither amateur nor professional. It's neither urban nor rural. See, it happens in places like Tiptur, which is not rural as such. It, it can happen in parts of Bangalore also. That's the, uh, the, 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 the interesting part. So therefore, it is not rural. It, it doesn't uh, um, fit into either the rural or the urban uh, divide, or the folk, uh, the amateur and the, um, the professional divide, or the folk and the modern divide. Again, the, the word folk itself is a very, very, very hugely complicated term. It's a derogatory term coined by the modern to describe the other. Therefore, I have never met, I have seen so much of what is called folk theater, but I have never found one person who is telling me that, you know, I am doing folk theater. He will say, I am doing Yakshagana. He will say, I am doing uh, um, Sannata, Sri Krishna Parijata. I am a uh, Talamadle performer. Their self-description, nobody will self uh, do the self-description as I am a folk theatre artist. Except for those people who have gone for these government uh, um, uh, festivals. Except for those people, only when they go for the, those government things, then they uh, describe themselves as folk theatre practitioners. Otherwise, the folk theatre, the word is not there. It is an invented uh, word. So what Nina Sam... Uh, tried to do. Ninasam had many options open. It could have become uh, an exclusive theater company where it, uh, later it started a theater institute and a repertory company, etc. So it could have become through that route, it could have become a, a theater for art practice, could have emerged. Th that route was possible for Ninasam. So, but Ninasam rejected that route, nor it could have remained as an amateur theatre group. It also rejected that group, that category. It tried to, um, you know, um, go in the middle space, which is neither professional nor, um, nor amateur. And when uh, Ninasam started uh, the, the theatre company, uh, uh, Ninasam Tirugata, it was neither modelled on uh, company theatre, nor modelled on Yakshagana, nor on the urban um, um, amateur theatre companies. So it was, uh, it was, it took various elements from, from all these three components. From um, amateur, it took the 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 um, uh, the, imp uh, the impulse to change the society that was taken from um, from the amateur theater and uh, being committed to the theater that was a value that was taken from uh, uh, from company theater company theater would have been uh, would would go to every corner of Karnataka to keep theatre alive. 
So uh, Tirgata also decided that it will go to not only to district centers, to all the taluka centers to, in Karnataka and even smaller places, which uh, we, have, um, we have done more than um, um, 20,000 shows now in uh, the last 37 years. So, um, so we have covered almost every small place in Karnataka, wherever, I mean, if there is a road, if there is a, uh, if there is electricity, we can perform there. We we take everything there, including in in, the, in in a bus. Everything is fitted in, and the actors are both technicians and actors, and they travel with that and do the show and then travel. Company Nataka is not like that. Company Nataka is that it's a huge troop. Everybody is paid well, and they go and stay in a place for uh, 15 days, 20 days, even six months, and then do shows, and then they change their uh, location. Tirugata is like more like uh, the Yakshigana uh, troops. They change, it changes space uh, every day, travels at least 50 kilometers to do uh, the, the, the uh, next show. And another uh, A uh, choice which Nina Sam made was to be serious and also popular. That's another divide that uh, that was already there. That amateur theater is serious, and the popular theater was I mean it it it, it content wise it there was nothing, so they could make theater out of anything. I mean that was their strength also, and that was their weakness. And in a uh, in a seminar, Professor um, uh, the late Kirtinath Kurtukoti said that you know company theater is the real theater he was i mean uh, he remembered company theater and he was telling us company theater is the real theater if you give them uh, today sayuta karnataka they will perform it it's not like you amateur say you need a girish karnat to perform they don't need uh, a play they i mean it, it he uh, made this statement when uh, there was a um, there was an uproar that you know there are no stageable plays in Karnataka, etc. in Canada, that, that when that um, uh, complaint was being uh, um, aired by theater practitioners, that was Kirtanath Kurtukoti's response. And uh, company theater was like that. I mean, for them, content was, I mean, no content was, was also OK. Even today, uh, if you go to a company Natak performance, there is some um, uh, story happening, and you know, the, the the outlines of that story is happening, and then they fill in with so many songs, duets, and uh, various Rasta scenes. And um, if you remember Master Hiranya, what he would speak in front of the front curtain was nothing connected to uh, his main play at all. It was completely a, a verbose a, a improvisation for going on for 45 minutes, 50 minutes, one hour. And, uh, he would abuse starting from the chief minister to the uh, Gram Panchayat chief. Um, the whole um, thing would be done in that, and then uh, uh, Sri Rama Pattavishaka will go on after, uh, after 50 minutes. And people never felt that it is um, incongruous. I mean, they, they felt that you know, it works. It worked. It worked be, you know, because he thrived. As a, as a, he's, he's very well known. I'm not saying it you know, against him. It's actually, it's, 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 it is the strength and the weakness of that form. And what we wanted to do in uh, Tirgata is to take that kind of a form. And remember, in theater, this is very common because you can now, Shakespeare has been uh, you know, lifted into the academics. But the original Shakespeare is a is a real, um, you know, uh, um, subaltern uh, London uh, person where uh, the audience would go with uh, beer mugs into their uh, uh, performances and it was, a, it was a rough theater. Therefore, in most of the uh, Shakespearean places, the first scene is so noisy that in the first scene they had to make more noise than the auditorium to keep the auditorium quiet. And Actually, we followed that uh, logic in, uh, in Thiruvata also. They make, to make the first scene very loud, drumming, etc., etc., so that after the audience becomes quiet, we start the play. 
realism doesn't uh, can, cannot happen like that so therefore realism doesn't work in india that's one of the reasons why it doesn't work because by the time uh, the half the play is over people are starting you know after the half the play is over people just you know get uh, uh, adjusted to the uh, to what is happening on stage so nina sam learned all these lessons from his from its um, um, context and the final point that i want to make is that at this point of time after the advent of uh, uh, entertainment industry during the 2000 1995 to 2005 and after 2005 the advent of social media after that we really have a huge problem i'll define what the problem is the problem today is not about theater at all interestingly is about the audience there is no audience today after the social media see what cinema did is that from one theater it attracted people to another theater another kind of theater so that was just a migration from one space to another space what tv did from theater to your drawing rooms what mobile did was more interesting from drawing rooms to anywhere in the world wherever you are in a park you are in a bus you are in a you are driving a scooter and then some people even watch a film and drive a vehicle also so it's a it can it can happen anywhere it has taken the, the whole entertainment into wherever that is possible so that that expansion is the death of audience i would uh, i would call it as in a slightly different way the spectators have been converted into onlookers that is the crisis that is today's crisis there are no spectators left in natya shastra there is a definition of uh, uh, prekshaka prekshaka is the one who is attentive honest able to argue and reason this is translation from a uh, shloka able to argue and reason who can defend who can detect a fault and yet be sympathetic and according to abhinav gupta the locus of art experience is in the minds of the spectator so the uh, the, the the art doesn't happen on stage it happens in the minds of the spectators therefore if you kill the spectator you kill the whole enterprise so now modernity has reached the climax the late modernity let us call has reached its climax and it has captured the last citadel that's your mind that's your perception it had captured it. how to decolonize it is the question how to free the the, the last citadel of uh, uh, of uh, slavedom how to free that is the biggest question that should trouble that is troubling most of the theater practitioners today how to regain prekshakship prekshakatva into um, uh, onlookers today you can uh, the examples are uh, you can just imagine and find the examples show me one uh, example of a public function in karnataka where a mobile phone does not ring it doesn't happen in any kind of function there will be at least 10 kinds of 10 mo mobile phones ringing so uh, everything has become um, and people are more interested in taking photographs than actually watching the first you know make a video of the performance rather than watching so it has the, the prekshaka ship has gone the prekshaka ship is an investment actually in um, in the sanskrit kavya mimamsa there are two kinds of imaginations there, there are two kinds of pratibha the bhavayitri pratibha and the karayitri pratibha the bhavayitri pratibha is the the imagination of the author the karayitri pratibha is the imagination of the reader or the receptor including the prekshaka so the prekshaka part of the karayitri pratibha is in danger today 
not the bhavitri there are vivek shanbax there are many writers today but there are no readers it has happened in literature also i mean i can convert this lecture into a literary uh, literature lecture just by changing examples so it has happened to drama it has happened to the uh, theater uh, it has happened to dance it has happened to all the arts including literature so that is the biggest challenge today and that is the um, uh, if somebody if some theater uh, practitioner today uh, regains the um, the prekshaka hood or finds a way to uh, to resurrect the audience then i think that is the future uh, the, the theater of the future thank you